January, January term, authentic learning for all learners. Uh, Cathedral is a Holy Cross Catholic school located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Roughly 1,100 students co-ed uh, right in the heart of the city. And uh, we're, we've been around 103 years and we're driven by our Holy Cross core values. And uh, you'll hear about a lot of those today throughout our presentation. And hello, NCA. My name is Mark Matthews and I am the Vice Principal for Academics here at Cathedral High School. And I'm also a social studies teacher. So today we're sharing with you, as Julie indicated, our January term, authentic learning opportunities for all students. And I'll have Mrs. Barthel begin with telling you a little bit about when we did this and what the process looked like. Awesome, thank you, Mark. Um, at Cathedral High School, we usually try and start with the why. So we're gonna tell you the why of why we did a January term. Um, we have innovation as part of our culture here at Cathedral High School. And the definition that we use for innovation is a, a culture of continuous improvement. And so about a year ago, my academic team was sitting around and we were talking about planning for the next year coming out of COVID. You know, we think we did a really great job uh, at the time. We were one of three large high schools in the state of Indiana that got to stay open and we worked tirelessly and we promised our families that we would be uh, the safest high school and that we would be open face to face because we know that's what kids needed. And so we kind of came out of that and we wanted to get back to talking about teaching and learning and talking about innovation. And our vision says that we will be the Catholic high school of the future. And so we were kind of challenging ourselves, like, are we being innovative right now? Are we thinking about continuous improvement? And so we had talked about J term and it had come up on some surveys through the years. And we said, let's do it. And we, even in that meeting, we had some apprehension, even it wasn't really that easy to say, let's do it. Even some of the people on my team were like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So we debated and we, is this the time? Can we get it done by next year? And so at the end of that hour and a half meeting, we said, we are having J term at Cathedral High School next year. And anybody leaving this room, we're gonna be on board and we're gonna get it done. And so we really were thinking about how could we be innovative for our kids? You know, with college um, application process is more, um, it's, it's more difficult than ever. More kids are trying to go to college. And so we need to help our kids have an amazing experience at Cathedral and also stand out in that application process. And we felt like having this J term to take a break from your traditional classes, um, just pour yourself into something that you're passionate about would be something awesome for our students. And so uh, from that point forward, we started planning, thinking about logistics, how we could um, bring in our 103 years of alumni that, you know, always want to give back to Cathedral through their time and talents. And so that's what we did. We started planning and um, Mr. Matthews and his staff in the academic office uh, took on from there. So I'll let him tell you a little bit about once we made this decision about the logistics and getting started. Absolutely. Thank you. So this gave our students opportunities to immerse themselves in, in hands-on experiences. And as Mrs. Barthel said, to, to do some things that they wouldn't have the opportunity to do traditionally in their regular schedule. So we were able to ignite passions of kids as well as our educators and to allow them to look at what their aspirations and interests were just beyond the rigors of an academic semester. So we provided our, our teachers the opportunity to share their unique gifts and talents uh, apart from the students that they typically teach at Cathedral High School. So we had English teachers who were involved in the history of rock and roll, for example. We had some of our religion uh, faculty who did service projects. We had one of our science teachers, and I'll show you this in a little bit, who did farm life. So you, you know, if, if our teachers could imagine it, we were able to at least begin to think about what could this look like. So our January term, or J term as we typically call it, um, the classes do appear on student transcripts, but they don't count in their GPA. The seniors, the juniors, and the sophomores had their choice of about, one, of about 40 different courses. But we decided it was important enough for our freshmen to have a, a shared experience that we had a freshman J term that was for all of them. And I'll show you just one example of that in just a little bit. So it doesn't impact their GPA, but it's high interest and it's definitely high passion. For those um, students who didn't have a, a, one of the offered courses that really piqued their interest, we also allowed our juniors and seniors to job shadow or do internships for one or two weeks. So in the end, as I said, we had about 40 different opportunities. And I'm gonna share my screen here briefly and show you the website we created that allowed students to preview what the courses were and then 
to decide which ones they wanted to try to sign up for. Julie, are you seeing my screen? Okay. Yes, absolutely. I can see it. Wonderful. All right, so as we scroll through here, we'll tell you a little bit about just a couple of these. So these are the 40 different courses that we created. And I'll show you actually a few of these. All Things Automotive was a very popular one for both boys mostly, but also some girls. We had a lot of alumni support for that. One of our alums even brought in um, a new Tesla to share with them, and that was quite a lot of fun. Some kids, as you know, want to have the opportunity to do something a little bit more academic, but not for a grade. So we had a, a group that actually created um, their own short stories and published them in a two week period of time. We're very fortunate at Cathedral High School that we have a Civil Air Patrol and Civil Air Patrol works really well with us. We brought a helicopter to school. We gave kids the opportunity to go up in, um, in planes on their second week to visit um, a university where Civil Air Patrol can turn into um, ROTC. And also we're close enough within a couple of hours to visit the Wright um, Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Every one of these has a service component to it. And so uh, Mrs. Barthel, would you talk a little bit about cultivating community, what that was about? Absolutely. We had uh, our director of admissions and one of our teachers actually go to one of our ACE elementary schools here in Indianapolis and got on a bus every morning and went over to that school and really just did whatever that school needed. They would help. They helped clean up. They planted flowers. They tutored kids. They helped with lunch and just really tried to build the um, more of the Holy Cross core values and a Holy Cross relationship than Really amazing on the last day of J term, the elementary students got on a bus and came over here to Cathedral to spend the day at the big kids school. And it was really one of the highlights of J term. Those little kids just, um, we have a brand new innovation center with a brand new dining hall. And so they just, they couldn't believe that they were in, a, in a, the big kids uh, cafeteria and were able to eat. And um, it, was, it was awesome, the smile on their faces. I promise you those relationships have continued after J term between our kids and those elementary students that they worked with that week. Thank you. Now, where we live in Indiana, the weather can be uh, unpredictable in January. We were fortunate this year from January 3rd to 14th that we had weather that was mostly in the 30s and the 40s. Um, and we didn't have any snow, so that was fantastic. We definitely had to have some backup ideas in mind if we were going to have some um, delayed starts or snow days. But as you look at this, we, we had the opportunity to do things like get outdoors, where our students actually earned um, their hunting and trapping certifications through the state of Indiana and the Department of Natural Resources. We had um, a group that hiked various state parks and city parks and uh, had the opportunity to travel within an hour or two from our school here in Indianapolis to see some amazingly beautiful sites to hike. Uh, I already mentioned to you the history of rock and roll is very popular. We had about 40 students. It was a one week course, but then there were a lot of things where the kids actually got active. We had CrossFit, we had yoga, we had opportunities for them to, um, to find out what is it like to live in uh, your, your world after athletics are over. And that was a really popular course too. So all kinds of opportunities for our kids. And as I mentioned, every one of these has a service component to it. So our 3D printers, the first day of class, our instructor said, not only do we want to learn how to make a profit with what we do, but what good can we do with this? So amazing opportunities for our students. And the way that we decided to do this was to open it up to seniors first. So at the beginning of the school year, our teachers proposed any number of things that they possibly might want to do. They had the opportunity to do it on their own or to work with colleagues. So we had cross department colleagues working together, which is a unique opportunity in high schools. Once they proposed their course, they had to give us the rationale and kind of outline it and then come up with a proposed um, course fee. It was really important to us that we had some that were absolutely free because we do have a lot of free and reduced students at our school and we didn't want um, that to be a limiting factor. We had some that were in the 20 or $30 range. And then we had some like our um, 
marine biology course, our golf in Indiana course, and then a pilgrimage to Canada to share our Holy Cross heritage that were quite a bit more than that. We offered limited numbers of scholarships because we actually didn't have a budget for this. That was one of the, the things we were kind of diving into without really knowing how, this would, how much this would cost us. So we're, we're kind of going on faith with a lot of this. But once the, uh, the teachers had proposed this, we essentially opened up to students and said, what is it that you want to do? And we thought about a lot of different ways to do that. We actually did build this as a two week schedule in our power school, for those of you who use power school, so that we could take attendance and so we could track this and put it on their transcripts. But the sign up was a, a lot easier than that. We, um, we purchased an extended version of Sign Up Genius, which allowed us to uh, sign up students for you know, up to 50 students um, for each activity. And we opened up the window first to seniors, then the juniors, then the sophomores. And as I already mentioned to you, the freshmen had the uh, opportunity to all work together in the freshman J term with a large group of educators. So I'm gonna show you just, um, and it might be a little bit clunky. So um, if it is, I apologize, but I wanna show you some clips from what our students actually did starting first with photojournalism. And again, as I said, might be a little clunky, but I'm gonna play about a minute of several of these. I'm Tony Willis, I'm an English and journalism teacher here, and I do the yearbook and newspaper of the faculty moderator of those two publications. My J term is called Advanced Photojournalism, Telling the Story of J term with a few two-week J-terms. So the same 10 students are spending the entire two weeks with me and Mr. Mora, our new religion teacher, and Mr. Meyer, our broadcasting teacher. And we're going out and telling the story of J-terms. So students have shot videos, they've shot still photos, they've gone on field trips to yoga centers and Lincoln Tech, and we've been all over the city with uh, some of the other classes. So it's been very cool to get to tell the story of what all the other students are doing during J-Term. I think the highlight with J-Term is just getting to have J-Term. Uh, you know, Mrs. Barthel, our principal, talked about the fact that, you know, the way we learn how to do J-Term is we do J-Term and we just dive right in. And it has really been great. Uh, my expectation for, you know, if we get a few good photos for the yearbook will be good. Uh, you're interviewing me on the second day of J-Term, and we've already shot 900 photos for your book. And by we, I mean the students. Uh, and what I'm most impressed by is we have several students who've never even used a digital camera. And by the second or third day, they were going out and just shooting really great photos. Part of that, though, I would credit to, we have some experienced photographers from your book and from newspaper who have worked with those students. So that obviously is from our J term, which was photojournalism. One of the neat things about I'm showing you is that each of these actually are shot by our students. And so you're seeing some of their work from that. In addition to photojournalism, um, at the end you saw that the students were in our gymnasium. For our freshman J term, we had a different alumnus speaker every day who talked about grit, who talked about high school uh, experiences, who talked about college planning. We talked about faith and we actually had a special um, um, mass as well because it fell during the Feast of St. Andre Bessette for us, a Holy Cross saint. This one is called Yarn It. Originally My name is Lisa Ford. I've been teaching math at Cathedral for 41 years. And the name of this j class was originally Let's Crochet, but the kids changed it to Yarn It. Our purpose, um, well, we're learning how to crochet, first of all, and um, in both weeks of classes, that we had different uh, groups of kids both weeks, and there's only been one student in each group who had any crochet experience. So these kids are brand new, almost all of them are brand new to crochet, and they're creating things like this, and this, um, and these hats will be donated to uh, local hospital cancer centers 
for chemotherapy patients. It gets really cold in the wintertime, and so these hats will keep their heads warm. So as I mentioned, every one of our J-Terms had a service component. And um, if you didn't hear what she said, she's a math teacher with 41 years experience. And she created this let's crochet. And as the children learned how to crochet, they made squares first, but then eventually um, hats to donate to cancer patients. So every one of these has a built-in service component, which was important to us. My name is Sarah Green, and I teach ceramics here at Cathedral High School. My j -term class is Advanced Independent 3D Art, and we like to call it clay all day. All my students who have finished ceramics 3 and independent study, maybe they've had a semester of independent study, or I've got a couple AP students that are in here, and I have two students who just finished ceramics too. So they all have a vested interest in what they're making. They have a good knowledge base of what they're doing. And this is an opportunity for them to work for extended hours on what exactly they wanna make and how they wanna make it. And they get to experiment with new glazes and new clays and basically do whatever they want. So my name is Hannah Newlin. I'm taking ceramics and I'm a 12th grader, senior here. Um, so far, I'm taking um, ceramics for my J term and I've really enjoyed it. Well, so far, I've taken it since sophomore year and I really like Mrs. Green as a teacher and I liked how I get to do what I like and like create what I want. So our students were able to make some amazing things in these two weeks. And um, as I mentioned earlier, these were not for credit courses. But in the case of our ceramics class, because we were able to provide 60 hours worth of instruction over two weeks, we were able to actually teach that one for high school credit, which was uh, you know, a very valuable thing for our kids. And now a little bit about what farm life is like in Indiana in the middle of January. Sue Mills. I teach anatomy and physiology at Peter High School, and my J term is farm life. So for farm life, uh, since I live on a little mini farm, I wanted to have the kids to have some experiences with horses and chickens and what it takes to run a little mini farm. And uh, so we are experiencing all that, all that kind of stuff, horses, chickens, farm life, or farm machinery, we're clearing fence lines, making sure the fence is uh, just looking so the horses don't get out. And we're doing some service across the road for the nursing home. My name is Jacob Bry. I'm class of 2023, and this is Farm Life with Mrs. Mills. Uh, we've done a lot this week for learning all about ranch life and taking care of animals such as chickens and horses. We've learned a lot about mechanics, um, for instance, changing oil, changing tire, which is stuff that we're going to definitely need to know down the road. And it's a really fun class. I chose it because I just love the outdoors and I love the animals. And um, I think it's been very productive, very good experiences, meeting a lot of new people and learning a lot of things that you wouldn't learn in the classroom. So that learning a lot of things you wouldn't learn in the classroom is one of the keys. Um, I happen to know, uh, because I helped the kids sign up for things, that that last boy you saw did the history of rock and roll for his first week. And he was living his best life, learning about rock and roll from the 50s through 2000. And then the second week he spent on a farm. So it was kind of like everything that the kids could possibly imagine. And then some. one of the more interesting ones that we were able to do was to teach students how to work with glass blowers. So here's an opportunity for them to get very creative and learn a completely new skill. I'm Jennifer Hollis. I'm a math teacher here at Cathedral. And so for this year for J term, I decided to do working with glass. It is not glass blowing, it is glass sculpting. So we went to a hot shop down in downtown Indianapolis and we took a group of kids and they got to use the furnace, they got to gather glass, they got to use a lot of the tools. They learned about the history of glass, how to make glass. It was really like an art class all rolled up into 
a three projects they got to take home at the end of the week. So next year with J term, we're going to have a beginning. So those who did not take it this year will have the opportunity to take it next year. And also next year, if they took Glassworks this year, we're going to have a different one where they can make other projects besides the paperwork and flower, the paperweights and the flowers that they did this year and learn some other techniques and some other art rendering items with these instructors that are wonderful down at the Glass Arts of Indiana. The students were very nervous because the heat is over 2000 degrees. They were really excited about taking it. So like the first day when we went down there on Tuesday, because the shops closed on Monday, they were a little disappointed the first day because they didn't get to touch anything. It was all instructors because when you're dealing with 2000 degree items, someone could really get injured. So the first day is all about techniques. They're a little bummed after the first day, but then on the second day, then they get to make something that just gets destroyed because they're just practicing. So it's like you're practicing for the big game in football. You're just running the drills. So you're just doing the techniques and practicing. Then we throw it in the recycle bucket and then they recycle that glass. And then on the third and the fourth day at the hot shop, that's when the kids are extremely excited because we have them pick out two colors that mean something to them. So I have them research two colors the night before so they're not, they don't go in there and like, I don't know what colors to pick. So they know what colors they want and they still can't see what the colors are gonna be. It's almost like a ceramics class until you get the final project. They're like, I'm hoping my colors look nice together. And then on Friday when they get their first project back, since it has to be in the oven overnight, they're so excited. They just love like, I made this. And I have something tangible that they can take home. It's like, I actually made this, isn't this cool? They really enjoyed that part of it. So, so not only did they get to make things and take them home, but as I mentioned, again, service in every one of these and each of the, each of the kids from that particular J-term donated one of their created items to our um, school fundraising auction. And we auctioned them off and, um, and they raised quite a bit of money for the school. And one final one I want to share with you, and I mentioned that all of our freshmen worked together, and this was a, um, the theater portion of our freshman experience. Kids to kind of see some of the, the makeup magic behind stage injuries or film injuries. We've talked about um, uh, different ways to warm up their, their vocal tools and their physical tools to be prepared for activities. Um, and we've also uh, done some scene work and prepared them for the basics of acting for film. I think that when I consider um, the experience of the last two weeks of our first J term at Cathedral, that one of the things that comes to mind is um, how much opportunity the students have had to step out of their comfort zone. Um, certainly not all 280 students are interested in the theatrical arts, but they've had the opportunity um, among their friends to kind of engage in something that's new. But I also think that the J term has been a good opportunity for them um, to learn in a different way where it's not sitting down at a desk. This week has been all about combat. And so the first thing we did is we started them on how to build a foam weapon, a foam sword, um, something that you would see um, in a movie, only a little less um, uh, exquisitely done with our you know, artistic skills. Uh, but they were able to build a foam weapon and we taught them some of the basics of a stage punch or a stage hair pull, a stage slap, so that they could see some of um, the work and the artistry that goes behind uh, stage and film um, uh, products. Then today, which was our last day of the J term, uh, for the first rotation, they got to use their foam weapons to actually do a sword tournament and uh, kind of test out their athleticism. So yes, we actually did a jousting sword tournament with our freshmen. Um, so much fun. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and just tell you a, a little bit more about how this all came to be. You know, as you could tell from our videos, we're still in masks. It was still in the middle of COVID. And so to go out on a limb here and try something brand new was important to us because, you know, we want to be innovative, as Mrs. Barthel said, but we also want to demonstrate that taking risks, um, while it can be scary at times, often has amazing benefits. And while our offerings typically in our academic terms are incredibly important and we're preparing our kids both for college and heaven, we also want them to have some opportunities to share in something that they're completely passionate about or can become passionate about. So Julie's gonna talk a little bit about why it might be important for your kids to get involved in projects that ignite that flame. 
Awesome. Thank you, Mark. I wanted to say one more thing about the freshman year. Think about the logistics. Our freshmen, as Mark said, we had a different guest speaker for all two weeks. When we were thinking about planning it, again, a teacher could offer something and we had you know, sign ups and they thought even the speaker you just heard from Ms. Shevlin, who was amazing with our theater, she wanted to teach a J term on Shakespeare, but not enough kids signed up. So we had some of those classes and that's going to happen each year. You know, you think here's what the teachers are passionate about, what they want to offer. We took those teachers and put them with the freshmen. So um, like we said, the freshmen traveled together. They didn't get to choose their J term this year. We started each day with the guest speaker, as Mark shared, and then they had breakout sessions that they rotated through. And so that theater was one of their breakout sessions, which really ended up being an amazing thing. Not sure about your school, but our freshmen don't have a lot of room in their schedules for electives. And so many of them don't can't fit theater or tech theater in their in their schedules as freshmen. So this made every freshman be exposed to the amazing theater program at Cathedral High School because it was one of our breakout sessions. Again, as Mark mentioned, we had leadership sessions and grit for our freshmen. We also had our counselors meeting with our freshmen. So this is a great mid-year check-in. They did a four-year plan with them. And we just had some meetings with our counselors this week that they just said that time was invaluable. So we'll, we'll leave that in there as well. Um, to talk about the reasons for J-Term, again, we we feel like we have to help our kids stand out. And, and a lot of times that can be those passion projects. And so many of the kids, I think when we think about authentic learning, we, we try and embed that in our school as much as possible um, and, and service learning as well as Mark said. I think I had a, an amazing example once of kids when we think about like service learning or um, how hard is a kid gonna work if the product is always for the teacher? And so you think about, here's a Spanish worksheet. We're gonna translate some verbs, do this Spanish worksheet. Or what if there's a local elementary school and they need their newsletter translated? I think those kids, they're still gonna be translating from English to Spanish, just like they would for the worksheet and for their teacher, but that authentic opportunity to do something for somebody else and research shows that they're gonna work at a higher level. They know there's another audience other than just their teacher. So we felt like in many of the things we were doing this week, um, during or not this week, during J term, there were authentic opportunities and kids were still learning at really high levels and transferring some of those skills that they would have done in a classroom. Now they're just doing it in another area. So we think this is going to help our kids stand out. They're going to put these opportunities um, on their resumes when they're applying for colleges. I think there's an advantage too when you try out a passion. One of two things is going to happen. You're going to think, this is awesome. I really like it. Maybe I will major in it. Or I tried it and I really didn't. Uh, we I know one of our Two junior girls went to an experience together um, with interior design and one of them came back and told us that was great I think that's absolutely what I want to do and the other one said absolutely not what I want to do and that's okay she had a great week she learned she's not going to major in it now for three years and then have to change her major so um, again with with the thought of innovation and saying that we want to be a Catholic high school of the future we felt like this was a great opportunity um, to challenge our students, to definitely challenge our educators. Uh, this was scary for them. A lot of them, this was a new way of thinking that they, you know, they're used to their content area and only that. But I've already heard some of them say, like, I can't wait to try this next year. I'm going to think about that. So um, we took a risk and it, it ended up really well. So that's the reason we had a J term this year at Cathedral High School. And I think the proof is in the pudding. You know, this is our first year. So seniors only got one shot at it. And I, I've heard a lot of our seniors say, gosh, I wish we had this all four years. I would have done this. I would have done this. I would have done this. And so our freshmen are kind of excited about the possibilities for the future. Now, I know we might run into some of you at NCEA in New Orleans, but if we don't, uh, here's how you can get a hold of us and find out more about Cathedral's J-Term. Our website is gocathedral.com. And if you simply go gocathedral.com slash J-Term, all one word, you're going to be able to see all of those courses that we offered and little, you know, thumbnail descriptions of what those classes were, as well as how much we charge as a course fee to give you an idea of what that might be at your school. You can also, um, of course, email us. I am at Mark Matthews. It's M-M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S at gocathedral.com. Julie is Julie Barthel. That's J-B-A-R-T-H-E-L at gocathedral.com. If you want a principal's perspective or if you want the perspective of someone who helped to build the course selections, um, we can definitely talk to you about those kinds of things. All in all, in the end, we gave our students a survey and the results of that survey were pretty eye-opening to me. Uh, somewhere around 60% of our students, freshmen through seniors, 
said that it was in the top 10% of all learning experiences that they've had at Cathedral High School. And there was a significant number that said it was among the top 5% of whatever they've done. And that's not to say that they haven't had great experiences in their regular classrooms, they have. We are preparing them, as we already mentioned, both for college and for heaven. And we are a, a college preparatory high school. They are getting the work done in the classroom. One of the frequently asked questions that you'll see on our website is, how can you afford to give up two weeks worth of time in the, in the midst of the busy schedules that you already have? And it's a challenge. So what we did with our AP classes, for example, is we had um, kind of a zero hour, if you will. And our students came in on a rotating basis and met with their AP teachers who didn't feel like they could give up those days of instruction. And that's great because it was a both and. We didn't want to limit anybody's experiences. And if those teachers felt like they needed that classroom time and they simply were not going to be able to make it up, we gave them that time. Now, you might have unique problems and situations in your own school. We'd love to help you um, work through those if, if you want, but I'm sure that your teams can figure out those answers for yourselves. Mrs. Barthel, I'll give you the final words on Cathedral High School's J-term. Okay, uh, we wanted to talk just a little bit about challenges and successes just at the very end. The challenges, of course, were the logistics. Anytime you do something for the first time, and Mark and his team were absolutely amazing. Um, you're trying to schedule 1,100 kids. They don't get their first choice or it's full or they don't answer at all and you're tracking them down. So that was definitely um, a, a challenge uh, trying to figure out. Um, a few things got canceled because of COVID. We had some really disappointed kids. They had maybe some medical thing, uh, internships set up. And then at the last minute, the hospital or the, the facility said no. So that you know had to refigure some things. Um, trying to guesstimate on the cost, as Mark said, we wanted some to be free because we wanted this to be equitable for all students. We definitely will build in more travel next year. A lot of our teachers have some amazing ideas for traveling um, abroad or in the United States. But to do that, we want to build in a budget. As Mark said, we didn't have one built in because we decided to do this um, in the middle of the year. So we want to make sure we have scholarships and grants available for students so that, that it is equitable. Um, the successes were unbelievable. I think Mark and myself, we, we never imagined the first year that we did it, how successful it would be. Um, Mark mentioned a little bit relationships. They were, you were seeing teachers and students that you may not have seen. If you're a, a higher student and you're in AP classes, you may not meet some other kids. And so this, this got kids together around things that they're passionate about. I know our Star Wars class, I think there were nine kids in there. They said they had never met each other before. So that was a huge success. Um, again, the passion projects that they could put on their resumes were great, but I think the big, biggest success stories were the emails that Mark and I got from parents with things like, this changed my son or daughter's life, this changed the way my son or daughter thinks about school, or I wish school could be more like J-term. Um, there's no way that we could have ever imagined the impact that J, this J-term could have had, and I think it forced our teachers to think in ways that they weren't comfortable with and they came out on the other side um, very proud that they that they did it and they accomplished it so um, as Mark said if you see us at NCEA we'd be glad to talk to you please reach out and email us um, we've only done it one year we're very excited about doing it again next year we've learned a lot but um, very pleased with the first year and glad we took that chance glad we uh, followed our uh, culture of continuous improvement and trying innovative things so I can't thank Mark enough and we hope you guys have a great conference Thank you all. God bless. We'll see you in New Orleans.